Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another video here on the Boudoir Guilds channel. I appreciate you. Cheers. And while you can't toast me back, I think the kindest gesture you could make would be to subscribe to my channel. And I mean kindest for yourself so that you don't miss any of these future videos where you can learn how to build a profitable boudoir photography business. My name is Mike Lloyd. I have been a professional photographer for 12 years, teaching for 10 of those, and boudoir is my jam. Now, this critique is a little bit different from my other ones. It's all about websites because websites can be a very, very powerful tool. There's a lot that goes into making an effective one, and we don't usually know what that is until we've learned what that is, myself included. I thought I had a really cool website for years until someone made a better one for me and explained why it was better, and now I generate leads and get business from it. So, yep, I've learned a lot along the way, and that's what I'm sharing here in this video. I'm going to go through a couple of my own students' websites and do a little critique on those so you can learn the same for your website. Let's dive in. Boudoir by Chanel Bledsoe Photography. Cool. I also like the social links up here. Looks like you have some e-commerce stuff on here for folks. Cool. Big image slider. Really consistent style too. That's super important. If all the photos look different, then, you know, like some are black and white, some are in color, some are outdoor, some are high key. Some are like avant-garde looking and some aren't. That gets really confusing for clients, but this is a pretty consistent look all the way across. So high five for that. Cool. Good, you've got links to book now. We'll get to there in a second. Okay, I think this is your H1. I can't. I can't click on anything on your site. How am I supposed to pick apart your code if I can't click anything? <laughs> okay, well, so you're telling Google that it's beautiful, essentially. Um, your headlines here, like I think it's cool what you did with the typography, but I would make this into a graphic instead because this is searchable content and your headlines, if someone Googles you dot r dot beautiful dot then it looks like you're going to come up in the number one space because it's the first line of text on this page i guess other than book now um so yeah reworking the headlines where are you uh knoxville tennessee cool so this should be something like knoxville tennessee boudoir right here um or boudoir in knoxville tennessee because that is going to be more Googleable than you dot r dot beautiful dot and then again make this an image that can go right underneath it if you want it to cool I love all this language okay so you're totally nailing the about section because it says it's about you and as soon as you start talking it's about the client and that is perfect because yeah people are like oh I wonder who the photographer is I really want to know that's important to me but they really just want to read about how you're going to serve them that's what they care about so this is great Facebook group, love it. Book, again, we'll get to that. Sweet. So photo credit Matt Matthews. I'm assuming he took the photo. That's a little bit confusing to me. I don't know that you need to credit him on your site. Like I get what you did and I think that's super cool to want to give him credit. But if I landed on a boudoir site and especially if I didn't know Matt uh, or who he was and I saw a photo credit from another photographer, that would make me wonder which photos are mats and which ones are yours. So I think that could be really confusing to your your clients. Okay, um, yeah, luxury boudoir in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's your your new headline right here. So I do like how you, how you have some calls to action on here, like the the book now, sign up for the Facebook group, takes you to the blog, cool. Um, also to get people on an email list, except newsletter subscription form does not make me want to click and sign up for your newsletter. So coming up with another name or some other description, like giving someone a reason to actually put their, their email address in there. And it could be like, you know, 
uh, get VIP access on special events, discounts on products and whatever. Um, but actually tell people why they should sign up because nobody wants another email newsletter. We have too many emails already, um, that, that don't bring value. And then update that. It's 2020. Can you have a, a footer down here with some navigation also? Just so people don't have to scroll all the way back to the top. That'd be that'd be cool. Okay, so this is the exact same copy on the homepage. And Google's going to punish you for this. Because Google does not like duplicate copy on a website. Especially this much, just like word for word, copied over. So I would I would definitely recommend either rewording this or rewording the homepage, add in a different section on the homepage instead of your about section. Um, it's also hard to see your navigation up here. It's not clear, you know, there, instead of having all the, the links listed out, this sort of navigation with the hamburger, those three lines are called a hamburger because right, the bun with the meat in the middle, um, that's generally found on mobile considerably less often on desktop. So if there's a way that you could make your main navigation more prominent, like underneath your logo or above your logo, words all the way across something, I think that would make this a, a much stronger user experience for your client. Portfolio. Your text is like right at the margins over here. Galleries. Dark and moody. Cool. Consistent look all the way around. That's awesome. Yeah, you've got a really consistent style. Cool. And there's a lot of photos here. You could definitely cut this list down. So what I would do, because it looks like you have like a dozen or so images or 10 images from each session. So what I suggest doing is turning these into blog posts, if you don't already have that, and tell, you know, grab eight of these, whatever, put them in a blog post, tell this woman's story as to why she did the shoot and what she loved about them and, and everything, and then reduce the number of images in this gallery and or mix them up more. So we don't have 12 images of the same person and then a bunch of images of the next person. Cause we're like a third of the way down the page so far and I'm on person number two, it looks like. So I think that would be super helpful to your, your clients also. Cause they're not gonna scroll all the way down the page with that many images, especially if they see the same person over and over and over again. So giving them fewer images, more of a variety will be a lot more powerful. And then again, you can show multiples of the same person, but throw those in a blog post instead. That also gives you content to share. All right, so testimonials also, like I said before, uh, on the last site, it's cool to like have them, but put these all throughout your site instead of just on one testimonials page. So someone can't help but see them because they're scrolling through the rest of your content. Also looks like there's some formatting issues here. There's like overlap in some of these columns. I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, when my site's at 100% on desktop, it gives you mobile navigation. And when I minimize it to 90, then we get this, okay. Yeah, this is what I wanted to see before. That's crazy. So yeah, the responsiveness is having issues here. I would double check that. I know when I work on mine, I always check it on my tablet, on my phone, and on my desktop with um, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. 
just to try and cover my bases. Cause sometimes something will look amazing on Chrome where I'm building my site and then I'll open it up and, you know, on the tablet or my phone or whatever. And it looks like garbage when it switches to mobile. Yeah. Especially this gallery in mobile is going to take someone forever to scroll through and they just won't. And navigation is harder in mobile because I can't just move a mouse around and click different menu options up here. So people will probably just leave the site. I like your space. Cool. Tons of good information. Uh, that stuff will never come out. When I did the workshop, shoot, that was like two years ago, maybe a year and a half, almost two years ago with, um, I made like glitter gel that we covered somebody with. It's still in, in my garage and on my furniture. This is great. I love this bit of info right here about the spray tan by a human, not a machine. So someone doesn't end up with drips and zebra stripes on them. And it's good that you've linked up with um, this tan salon. Do you have an arrangement with them, like um, an affiliate program, or do your clients get some kind of discount? Because that could be a cool thing too that you can offer your clients like 10 bucks off your spray tan if you go to these guys and work out a deal with them because then you can cross promote and share clients. Do you provide hair and makeup? I, I know I totally didn't read everything. Okay. This would be another thing like your, um, like your tanning is to give them a suggestion on who to call. But this is why I require it in all of my sessions. I know this is a website review, but it's mandatory for my sessions because people will skip that step or they'll hire someone super cheap that does a crappy job. And then there's a chance they don't look good in the photos. And if they don't like the way they look, they won't buy anything. Cool. Okay. So if I'm clicking to a products page and then I have to click to another products page, that's a weird extra step. Can you just make the products link? go to this gallery page. I think it's like 10, 15 years ago when all the websites had like landing welcome pages, like click to enter when it was like, I, I just want to go to the website. Why do I have to click again? So it looks like your blog posts are all selling something. So there's no value. And in, in that like, you're not just giving value to the clients here. And the blog is a really, really powerful place to do that. So you can create, you know, how to pick out the perfect outfits, uh, how to find the right hair and makeup stylist. This is my client's story. You know, that's why I said, grab those photos from your gallery that had tons of, of images of the same person and create one post with, you know, 10 of their images and tell their story. Cause then they can share that blog post on their own social media if they want. And that drives traffic back to your site. So that could be a really powerful tool. But also if you've got one on, you know, one blog post on bridal boudoir and one on hair and makeup and one on whatever you could run traffic to your bridal boudoir one. Like, why is it a great gift? Or, you know, these five products make a great bridal boudoir gift, something like that. And then at the end of the blog, there'd be links to drive them to another blog post to keep them moving around the site. Okay, cool. So yeah, you've got, oh, and it's a link too. neat phone number. Good. And you've got like booking session links everywhere. That's awesome. Boudoir for all. Okay. So this opt-in should just be this thing down here. Cause it seems weird, especially you've got a call to action right here and then enter their email and then enter their email. There's three different calls to action right here on my screen. And if someone has to choose between those, I think they're just going to hit the back arrow. It's too many choices right there. Yeah. Yeah. Make this lead magnet, your, your sign up down here and maybe so like, give me the guide instead of give it to me. Cause to me, that's like, enter your email, give it to me, give me your email address. That's how I'm reading that. <laughs> Like you're aggressively trying to get my client or your client's contact information. Cool. But yeah, so you've got a way to get people on your list here. Put that around the site also. Okay. So let's book our session. 
this logo is not this logo. I think especially when you get to the point of asking someone for money, you got to have everything consistent so it feels like they're on the same website because the site feels different also. Um, okay, so we're going from your boudoir site to your general photography site with an e-com system here. Oh, looks like it's through Square. Okay, gotcha. So if I'm a boudoir client and I go on here and I see all these other different things on there, that's going to be kind of confusing. So if you could create a signup page just for boudoir and nothing else and link to that, that would be a lot better because you don't want them looking through other options. You just want them looking at boudoir, especially because now there's a different logo up here and a different home. So if we click home, now we're not even on the same site anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you got to just give them options to sign up for boudoir and nothing else because this is like a totally different brand up here. Okay, so we got an all-nighter and a quickie. Cool, nice and simple, quick description, except it's called the all-nighter and it's only a one-hour shoot. That seems weird to me. Hair and makeup included. I don't remember seeing that on your your shoot description page, right? Because we're on a whole different page. I can't even go back up. I'd have to like go back pages to see where that was. But I'm glad you have this on here. Yeah, that's that's really important to make sure you list that. So good on you for that. Cool. All right. So yeah, that seems nice and easy. I'm curious if you normally book these. If people sign up for a, a 20 minute quickie shoot. Um, to me, this seems kind of off brand because the, the verbiage on your site is like, let me get back to the, the boudoir, right? Premium luxury, custom leather, but like a 20 minute shoot, a quickie shoot without hair and makeup to me doesn't feel on brand for the high level of service that you're promising your clients. I think if you were to have separate, you know, uh, mini session days, something like that, that would be a, a different story. Yeah. I'd be interested to chat with you more about that. If you're, you're open to that. Well, I hope you learned a ton there. That was a pretty good one. And I know it's a little bit different than my usual photo critique. I know I've done a logo critique before and I've got some other ideas coming up as well. So if you want your own website critiqued, drop it down in the comments, put your link down there, let me know. And if YouTube is being weird and not let you share links, you can always just email me, mike at boudoirguild.com. And I would be happy to include you in the next one because I want your website booking clients for you so that you can make money and live the life you want as a boudoir photographer. Cheers. So if you wanna know more about marketing and how to book clients like yesterday, you can head to boudoirguild.com. I've got a marketing course there, which includes things like SEO and portfolio management and all kinds of fun stuff to help you build an effective marketing platform for your business. And I've got other killer videos on this channel, like my favorite ways to book clients, how to use Facebook ads, all that good stuff. So you can also hang out right here. You are amazing. See you inside.